Hello everyone, this is uh, Richard Cespedes, and uh, I know that a lot of people um, have a lot of disagreements on my ideas, and uh, they think that it's just a bunch of hogwash, and it's lame or whatever it is, you know, but it's just uh, the way that I think and feel of how to push the human body and human mind to other places, you know, like we live in an era where everything has been done, you know, that's something that I think that people can really um, attest to and really agree with. That everything that has been done, uh, everything that can be done has been done. Everything, there's nothing new under the sun, basically. And so, like, in order to push oneself further, you have to dwell. You have to dive into an area that is really unrecognizable by many people, you know, and... Uh, the way I see it is that uh, how I've been talking about fighting and things like that. Um, the thing is, though, is that um, it's not just about fighting individuals. It's about bettering oneself. And it's about being superior and being efficient and being a better individual and learning how to control a person's personal life, you know, to be more humble and be kind and be respectful to others and self and everything. But um, since we live in a world where, you know, we're still um, fighting each other and there's disagreements and uh, we step into things too soon and then we end up getting into complications and things become problematic, you know, there's no way to look at it. So, like, by utilizing all those defaults, we can create something new from those problems. And what I mean by that is that um, in order to become the way that I see it, the way my technique um, is that you have to become almost um, like sorry to use a certain I can't use certain words the appropriate words but the words are from what I've uh, come to realize is that you have to become um, sociopathic in a way um, psychopathic all these other things you know like not really you know like I'm not like that but I'm just a person that pushes limits you know and that's the way I've always been. And that's and uh, even as a child, I've always understood um, trends and styles, and I've always recognized those things. Like many people, they all grow up like that. But for me, I think I had a particular knack for those types of things, you know. And uh, I've always been like that. This is the way I've always been, pushing things. And uh, um, the thing is, though, is that you, have, in order to be different, in order to really achieve something that's extraordinary you have to venture into places that most people just would not want to go or they just don't have enough time or emotional stability or just don't have the spirit or heart just to do it you know it's just not who they are and what I mean by that is that um, um, going into places that dark places of yourself venturing into dark places of yourself in order to to see things differently and to feel differently and to calculate things around you differently and like uh, um, you know it's hard to say it again psychopath and socio sociopath now these are just techniques that I use you know I'm not saying that I am a sociopath psychopath but I'm what, what, what I'm using I'm utilizing those types of things in order to venture into a place discover something and then uh, publish it on YouTube and then step away you know what I'm saying? Like you, you go into a place, you learn, and then you step away from it, and you just go back to being normal, living a good life, being a normal person. This is my technique um, in order to venture into new places. You know, um, you have to venture into new places within yourself. Um, um, like um, sociopaths, they go in, they're, they're they're in a dark place. They spend time alone. They uh, they're always thinking. They're always angry. They always hold grudges or whatever always wanting to find the victim or whatever uh, for financial gain or, or, or abuse or whatever and um, the thing is though is that uh, what we don't also realize is that uh, my other video um, animals live sociopathically and psychopathically we just don't recognize it as sociopath or psychopathic we recognize it it's it's mostly a term that's recognizable in humans not so much in animals but animals do live sociopathically and psychopathically you know, um, we, we just don't uh, see it within them because we don't recognize them. Um, uh, we don't recognize them um, 
wholeheartedly as we do with other human beings. We don't we don't label them in that way because it's a term mostly used for humans. But uh, animals within their psyche, within their spirit and their being, they live that way in order to survive and to um, um, in order to be a step ahead of their prey to eat and to step ahead of their enemies or, or problems or things like that. You know, just to survive. They're like that. Um, but they live it every day. You know, um, they live in that clockwork type of mental state in order to survive. It's every day. It's strained and intertwined and enclosed within their mind. And in and it um it's it's basically interwoven into this into their their being. And um like if you look at tigers, um lions, you know, the older lions, you look into their eyes, they you can't say that they don't look psycho psychotic. Their eyes just look like dead. You know, like if you look into a lion's eye, just Google it. Google uh Google lions, you know, close up shot of lions, you look into their eyes. And they look like, you know, straight out, like, insane. They look like they don't give a damn about nothing. They're just, they're just in their own world. You know, you can see it in their eyes. You can see that. They're animals, yes. But they are psychotic and soci sociopathic, you know. We, 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 we just don't see it that way. Because the term belongs to human beings. And because human beings venture into ugly places, we... We, we label them as psychotic or sociopathic, but animals live that way. And um, there is there is a, a other other things about animals. You know, they are nice, they are lovable, they are soft, they are caring for their for their kind and things like that. And the, some of them are able to make friends with other types of animals, like you've seen on YouTube. You know, like a cat makes a friend with uh, with a bird or whatever. And I'm pretty sure in the wild, um, a tiger makes a friend with uh, with a deer or whatever is out in the jungle. Um, um, I forgot the name of those other ones, um, but uh, like you know, sometimes that occurs. But they do live that way, and uh, but it, it's just a natural occurrence for them. And the thing is, though, is that um, like what I, what I wanted to talk about mostly was that uh, you do have to venture to play. Like if I were to describe the sociopathic world and to venture into the dark places, I would say it's like it's like a very vast empty space of like of uh, quietness and emptiness and sadness or whatever but in the, in a sad desolate place like that like most people it's like you you know you could see some people here and there they venture there too but it's a very empty place not everybody goes to those places but sometimes you have to go there in order to look for new things and um for discovery of new things and uh, i wanted to get to the straight to the fact that uh i might just upload a talk about um like uh you see that the, the the thing is is though um you have to um like i say you have to become detached to your environment um you have to come to become detached in such a way that you're able to be comfortable detached not um become suffering um like it, it's, it's like this it's like this like let's say for instance um you're a professional you know like on a a Guinness World Records, they always have these people walking on bottles, for instance, you know, with their feet, you know, and let's say you're a professional and you've done it, you've broken records, you know, the time to cross a, um, like 20 feet of bottles or whatever, and let's say you keep on pushing limits, it's always pushing limits, let's say you want to push limits, and you just push it to the straight limit where there's like a straight line of bottles, and uh, there's like a five foot gap between one bottle, a line of, a line of bottles, but there's a one foot gap between those bottles one bottle and another bottle and in, in between in between those singular bottles is a foot gap so you push yourself but a lot of people don't don't really consider but the way i see myself um elevating the mental state of people and elevating people's uh, way of understanding how to be above the norm let's say that you want to take it up another notch that people would never think of you you then utilize being emotionally drained as a technique you physically make yourself emotionally drained that's a technique there's an uh, and the second would be um your mind is diverted onto other things that are going on in your life your child financial things your wife cheating on you problems of family other family members that's a technique then you utilize another technique um um, 
probably uh you're uh you're just you know like I can't think of any of the other problems you know you're just emotionally drained um you're depressed you use you, you, you utilize that you make yourself depressed you make yourself this makes basically a wreck you're just a emotional drained wreck your muscles are just like flimsy uh, pieces of uh, spaghetti you know because before your technique would be focus walk on bottles you had your blindfold on or whatever you know but this time you you break yourself down emotionally because what happens is that when you vent you uh, the way I do it the way I do it is that you're always on a razor razor's edge of an emotional destruction personal destruction you're on a mo you're on a razor's edge on a, on a cliff you're about to fall off you know you're 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 it, it's almost the end of your life basically you know your life is ending you're on a razor's edge you're an emotional wreck but this time all of that all of that mess you're going to go and utilize that in order to further uh, allow you to utilize that as a technique in order to further um, advance you to across uh, those bottles not only get across those bottles an emotional distress state diverted mind thinking of other things but you're going to have a, um, a table on your shoulders with two ladies sitting on it you're going to be holding a uh, elongated um those um wire you know those 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 pipes that the that the that the wire uh that the rope rope walkers whatever they are they have this big old long thing and at the end of them they have you're balancing eggs on them just like the ninja turtles i think leonardo was doing that and then and then you're, you're using a blindfold and so now you're on you're completely you know it seems as though it's impossible impossible it seems impossible but this is a trick this is a trick whenever you look at something whenever you look at an object that you've seen a million times you become um you know it, it becomes mundane it becomes boring but but when you change the emotional state of how you of how you're feeling you look at that same object in a different emotional state and that object looks different that object looks more um, more interesting it seems to take on a new shape of of significance like you're looking at a, a little red ball and you look at it every day but once you, you you're emotionally in a different state of mind and you look at that same ball you're able to look at the angle at the same angle that you've seen many millions of times but this time in a different mental state you're looking at the ball in a different angle but then all of a sudden that angle takes on a new meaning it allows you to see something more than what is than what you thought was always there it allows you to perceive deeper it allows you to feel deeper it allows you to feel and see things more deeper and they they some something manifests it's, it's 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 a manifestation of more meaning it's a connection between you and the object a more deeper connection of you and the object that's like in quantum mechanics um like in string theory and all that uh, the scientists say that when you're looking at, at at an object um the object is not disconnected to the person both the object and the person are connected and when you change your emotional state from all the other days that you've seen the same object whether it's this or a red ball you change the energy that's transferred from you to the object and that right there is what allows you to transform the whole entire state of your reality into another way of feeling and thinking and allows the energy to to transfer and allows you to think things differently and allows you to perceive and feel things more deeper and then that right there is when you create your own reality is when you create your own perception of what what more can come from it you know that's why when you get yourself emotionally drained your mind is in a different state the whole energy level everything about you may, may not be seen physically but 
quantum physically, the quantum level, everything in your tissue, everything in your brain, everything slightly transforms. The space around you is slightly shifted and warped. And so when you look at the same thing that you've seen a million times, you looked at it at all the angles, but when you look at it in a different state of mind, in this different state of feeling, you see something new and something that you can utilize. Take Once you're in that state of seeing something new, being connected to something that's old, that's when you create your own way of thinking and feeling and your own reality and your own language. Not just verbal, but emotional language and your own energy. And that is what, that is the new way, a new way of, a new way of looking at things, a new way of, 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 of uh, controlling the uncontrollable, of controlling problems that seem to be out of reach, controlling problems that seem impossible, trying to outdo the impossible, trying to make the impossible possible. Because you as an individual, you are just completely transformed. You are in your own universe. You are, you have became, you have become your own universe. And that is like the secret to it. You're and then and then also too, you're you know the other things too, which which what I use my technique is by uh seeing through people, seeing through what they are. So basically, um sorry I have to jump from that, but basically you're always on a razor's edge all the time. But when you're on that razor's edge, you take advantage of that emotional distress to divert the mind. Do, doing two things at once, being emotionally distressed, but at the same time you're thinking something new. You're thinking and feeling something new. And just by letting go, the strength comes. The strength comes. An unbelievable strength comes within you. You can use it as fighting. You can use it as different things, knowledge, mathematics, or whatever. But you, you, you're able to see through things that emotional state it's like uh, when you're close to death people say that when they're when they're close to dying they see the life flash be uh, before their eyes they're both when the person is dead and they're dying when they're in that state of seeing the flash flashing of the lights be before their eyes they're in a um, in a state where they're both in their in, in the common world the reality and in another dimension and in the old dimension of where they've been living in and then they have their foot both stuck between two worlds the old and the new dimension and that right there is when you're able to kind of utilize both knowledge from both of those stages of the emotional state take advantage of that moment of that moment of of a complete dis self destruction self diverting mess and allow yourself to be put into a position that's what I've done and I do believe that uh, that you're able to do almost anything. Now, as crazy as it sounds, you're able to, uh, you know, uh, I would say that if you if you're on when you're fighting someone, you're always on that edge. That's basically what it is. You're always on a razor's edge. You're always on that edge. You're always on a tiptoe on the cliff. But then when you take advantage of it, you're able to think. It's like you're on a razor's edge, being broken down. But then all of a sudden, you take advantage of that moment to like theorize about certain things. Okay, okay, you know, like you're walking on the bottles with the pipe and the ladies on the and your bolt and you have the blindfold on and you're emotionally broken. And about the same time, you want to think about some mathematics while you're doing that. You're doing multiple multitasking in order to push yourself to new levels of theorizing. You know, you're doing all multiple things in order to create something new within yourself. And I do believe that uh, because of the technique in particular fighting I do believe that the human body can withstand acid and uh, withstand uh, bullets withstand a baseball bat to the head because everything is being shot at by another individual you see through the individual the bullet comes out of the chamber but that bullet still holds all the energy because that person's holding the gun the energy is being carried in the gun and anything that's being pulled out the energy carries along with it that person's emotional state, who the person is, is all being connected 
to that gun. So when you look through the individual, you're looking through that little piece of gun, that, that little piece of, uh, of bullet that's coming at you, you're seeing through them. You're not allowing that bullet to hurt you. You're seeing through them. Even if it's not, that bullet, you wouldn't think it's a part of them, but it is because the energy still carries through them. All the information is being carried through with the bullet. The, the character, the personality of the individual, who the person is, the child within them. You're looking through all that and you're able to withstand almost anything. Become almost indestructible. Almost. Um, indestructible. You know, it, it, as amazing as it is, I do believe that it is possible to become indestructible. But you have to you have to venture into a whole new world. You have to become solo. Solo. You have to, you have to become uh, almost uh, by yourself. But once you discover all that, you'll you know you'll be remembered forever. You know, so you'll be a living Superman almost. And uh, um, as Rich says, it is, and that's probably the most detail I've ever spoke about my theory of how to defend yourself and how to advance yourself to be better and I hope that you know all y'all just kinda take heed and just just think about my ideas really if you think about quantum mechanics and string theory and Albert Einstein and all this stuff I mean that nothing is impossible just look up math look up what we discovered look at what they discovered a hundred years ago we thought that things would be impossible teleportation you know like within a few hundred years teleportation is gonna be you know, a, a, a very possible thing, it's going to be reality. You know, we have quantum computers. You know, it's just it's just different ideas, man. It's just that nothing is impossible. And again, it's Rich Sis, but it is. Thank you all for watching. And uh, this is my ideas. And uh, just think about it. Thank you very much.